welcome everybody to our virtual Face the Facts. It's great to see you all here once again. I am Nick Face. Joining me on connection here on our computer satellite, we have Phil Healy, the program coordinator from Northam Studios, and Mr. Black and Gold himself, Tom Smith. Welcome in, gentlemen. How's it going? How's it going? Well, I think we should be all very happy right now, considering that the Bruins just pulled off their 4-3 to three overtime win against the Carolina Hurricanes, so that was pretty awesome. I uh, came in two overtimes, so that's take two, not five last night, like the Lightning and the Columbus uh, Blue Jackets, but I'll Nuts. take a win any way, any way possible. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, first, uh, just a couple takeaways that you saw from uh, the game. Um, so I only got to see the third period and the rest of the overtimes. Um, but I will say from what I saw, they looked a lot better than they did in the round robin, for sure. Um, I, I feel like – well, I, I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to jinx it. But um, when, once the Stanley Cup is raised and everything, then, uh, then I'll give my opinion on the round robin. But uh, they look like they're playoff ready. They look like they are – cup contenders they look like they are a team that is ready to go has been ready to go yeah. um and they could probably make another run for the cup this year uh phil did you get a chance to see uh, any of the game today i was only uh watching like a live cast of it a little bit and i haven't really been following up on too much hockey yeah. uh, i've been hearing stuff back and forth and reading up a little bit but uh, i saw the the last goal and it was pretty nuts. Uh, and also, like, just looking at the game, you know, an overtime game. And they're all round robin, so that's two out of three, right? Is that how they're doing it? No, the round yeah. robin is done. So the Bruins oh, that's done. were playing for nothing. Um, I'll, I'll interject with um, yeah, yeah. my takeaway from that after, after you were done from just my overall spin on how things went. But I was very happy, at least, with this game one performance. It proved me 100% correct with, I personally feel that Cassidy and the rest of the Bruins organization told these guys, doesn't matter a hill of beans, what you do in these round robin games. You know, the worst case scenario is they lost all their round robins. The key to getting into the playoffs and to, the key to a successful playoff run here was to stay healthy, get yourself physically ready to battle, you know, because the, the main objective here is to get that cop. Yeah, I agree. Um, I was really getting tired of people starting to get so set up. Like, it's, it's round robin. Like, relax. They're not going to go out. They're well, not going to give a call. Yes, it helps to get, you know, get your feet wet and your skates going with, you know, getting, with getting a rhythm and everything. But they, these guys have been there, done that. And they, they didn't need a round robin. They just didn't. Well, I, I, think, I, I think the thing that people were frustrated about is the fact that they had already handed the Bruins the President's Trophy. So it's like, why are we re why are we playing to recede if you're already telling these guys that they won't? It was just a way for the NHL to make some more money off the television ratings from stuff so they could get some extra games in there before, you know, the real games matter in a way. That was my takeaway, at least from... I agree. Point. That's what, at least what I felt with how... Right. I saw but, uh, the uh, that top line of Bergeron, Pasternak, and... I mean, it was great to be able to see Patrice Bergeron put that game winner into, into the net. You know, much deserving right there. You know, the story just continues to build here for, for Bergeron. So deserving of that goal. A couple things I also like from this game, just in all... The second line, you're definitely seeing a connection with Krejci and it's Kase, right? Kase or whatever his name is. Kasha. Kasha, thank you. They really felt like that flow of the game and they were jiving well together. And I want to see more of that because if you've got a really good second line, if Krejci and Kase is really doing a nice job on that second line, take all the pressure off that first line. You know, they can go out and they can do their normal thing. Then teams have to defend and figure out what they want to do with, you know, defending the second line. So you need that second line to have a really solid playoff run. Yeah, couple of takeaway, couple of takeaways from at least the game today, anyway, compared to last year is, first, you had a lot of score, you had scoring from the first line, which you really didn't see too much of in the playoffs last year. 
you had scoring from the second line, which you really you didn't have any really no, in didn't last didn't. year. Second line was invisible. And then, uh, and then the third line and fourth line basically remained the same compared to what they did last year. So I, know, it's a completely different looking team this year. You know my love for the fourth line. You know that's your Corrales, that's of, of the world on that on that style line. That's that's your gritty top line. And that line, if they're able to give you something, whether it's a physicality game or just getting getting some kind of rhythm going with puck movement or something. You want to see that quite a bit. I think they're the best fourth line in hockey. I'll make that point. Well, oh, I agree. I, I mean, we, we've had – the Bruins have had the, you know, the best fourth line in hockey for a while. And another another takeaway from today, too, is um, Charlie McAvoy looked really good. Well, here's another good thing for the Bruins on this whole playoff run is the experience. I can't really name that many other guys who might not already have Stanley Cup or, play, or playoff experience now. Maybe Jeremy Le, uh, Lezon, who who's out there, who's giving you some really some good uh, thunder with bumping and in, bumping into some of these other guys, which is great. You want that physical game. But you know, you got Coyle, who's now more experienced. You got Jabrusk, who's gone through a uh, Stanley Cup. You know, McAvoy, like you said, Carlo. I mean, you need you needed that experience, and I feel like that experience. Is going to help this team in the long run. That's just my takeaway. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, they look they look really good today. I mean, even even Rass looked pretty good. There were a couple, you know, a couple stops that shots that he should have had, but didn't. Um, but I mean, you can't you can't really put that on the goalie. I know I was texting you back and forth a little bit. I thought the sec- the third goal that was let in from Rass was pretty weak. Um, but you get a win out of it. You you got to build. It's tougher when you're a goalie when you sat out for months and months and months and months. They need to work more on their reflexes, their vision to make sure that they're in the right spot. I thought Tuka was out of place on a couple of different different saves that he went for. I thought in the first overtime he got very lucky with a tricky bounce that kind of went up into the Raptors, yep. and he was yep. very out of position. And that's what. Uh, Andy Brickley was saying on the broadcast, right. what are the, um, our, our lovely friend Jack Edwards, and the positioning is something that is going to take more game rhythm and game, more game, you know, time. And, and I, I don't have any doubts on Raff. I just he's got that thing over his head where he hasn't won a Stanley Cup. It's got to happen now. It's got to happen. Well, and and you have to remember too, he has that hip flexor issue that he that they has that he has going on right now, where he wasn't playing a couple of round robin games because of that. So that's another thing to you know keep in mind. Um, so again, with, with our Bruins, they weren't supposed to be playing right now. They weren't supposed to be playing this morning. This all happened because the late game or yesterday. I think that started what five thirty at night. It started at three. It started at three. Excuse it started me. Started at three, and it went like six hours. The, the, that was the Lightning and the Blue Jackets played yesterday. The game went five overtimes. And Tampa ended up pulling up that victory by a score of four to three. That ended up canceling last night's Bruins game, which was supposed to start at eight o'clock last night. So instead of having a day off tomorrow. The Bruins will jump right back into the swing of things again, which I think is a good thing. You know, you get your swagger from that. I'd rather game. that. I'd rather that too. Imagine having to sit with you in Carolina after a loss. That's that's tough. So you get your uh, you know your legs off. You get a little bit of a breather now, and then tomorrow night, hopefully, you know we have to say hopefully because who knows? Uh, tomorrow night game is at eight o'clock, and that game is again on nothing. So honestly, uh, though. And two, and then game three, they'll play Saturday after, early afternoon at 12 o'clock. Go ahead, Tom. Honestly, though, I, I would I would kind of prefer to play hockey at 11 o'clock in the morning anyway. You know, it's well, right at it's working. right at that I mean, point. We were out there working, so I, got, I, was a little, I was a little agitated because you want to get home and you want to watch that game as best you can, but you couldn't. So I, I missed that first period and a half, basically. Uh, of just listening but if I'm if I'm a hockey player, if I'm a hockey player, I, I wouldn't mind playing at eleven o'clock in the morning. You know, it's right in between that time where you you know you're already oh, woken right. up, and now you're and now you're uh, now you can get you can get your legs moving, and then you have you know 
an afternoon to rest, and then you have the morning skate tomorrow at some point because they play eight. The uh, victory here in game one. How important was that? Oh, that's huge. That's okay. huge because there are a lot. There, there were a lot of fans. There were a lot of fans that were doubting that we would be able to pull it off after they, what they, they saw in the round robin. Do you think any of the Bruins were doubting themselves? Oh, absolutely not. They, they knew. So, they knew. They know what they're doing. They knew what they were doing. I think they knew what they were doing. This was just uh, an opportunity here for fans to freak out. And luckily, I wasn't one of those fans that freaked out. You know, I heard from a lot of people, my father included, oh, it's done. Screw this team, you know. They're not going to win. I can't believe they can't win a round robin. How do you expect them to win a playoff? Well, that's because it's a system. And that system that's been trusted and brought down from Cassidy and the rest of the guys, they know what they're doing. I trust Cassidy. I do. I trust Cassidy, and I trust what the Bruins are trying to do. And they don't want to get back to that stage that they were at last year. I know that the pedal to the metal is to get that cup. They're not going to blow this opportunity again. So it's copper buff. Yes, I think right. that works. You know, it's right. copper buff. Believe in Bruce. Uh, another another point I want to I want to make about this game too that you know was huge. It was a huge play. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't realize it, but uh, Sveshnikov in the first overtime tried to go into that lacrosse move, and uh, Carlo knocked his stick down, and knocked the puck off his stick while he was in the middle of it. So that was a huge play by Carlo. I'm a big Carlo fan. I think he's. Def- I think personally, he's your number one defenseman. I'm as much as people like McAvoy and everything. I think. Carlo is that. But you put everything together with Krug and Chara and uh, Lazon and all those guys, they got a really good team. But really good depth, too. And the, they're already doing a step better than the uh, last year's President's Trophy winning team. So they already have one more win than last year's President's Trophy team. Yeah, I'm not even going to worry about that President's Trophy thing. Don't even want to talk about it. Don't even care about it. It is what it is. For the rest of the NHL, what else have you seen, Tom? So we have the Bruins, obviously, in the Carolina series. What else have we seen? You know, we talked about Tampa and we talked about the Blackhawks, but what else is there to look ahead to? Um, I think another series to t- take uh, keep an eye on is the Washington Islanders series. I think that's going to be a good series. That's a, another rematch from last year. Um, there's a few rematches from last year. Who are you thinking comes out of that? I think it's whoever stays the most healthy. I think that's going to be an, an, another tight knit uh, round, another tight I'm, tight knit matchup. I want the Islanders. I, I just I, Washington scares me. They scare me, you know, Ovechkin and everything. They scare me, so I, I'm hoping the Islanders can pull it off. And do the Bruins play the winner of that series, or is it the Tampa and the Blackhawks? Uh, it all depends. It all depends on who comes out of the first round. It all depends on the seeds. So we know the Bruins are the four seed. Yep. Who is? So I would. It's probably the who's the number one right now. That's the Philly and who? Uh, Phil. That's between Philly and Montreal. So I think we play the winner of that actually. Because wouldn't one play four? Well, again, it all depends on the on the seeds because so I did I did a few brackets so I can I can uh, I'll I'll leave you to that so you can come back maybe later and we can determine exactly who this. I think so. Still- so if 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 Columbus and Philly win their series, they play each other, and then if the Bruins and the Islanders win, the Bruins play the Islanders. Okay, so it would be the Islanders' second round. Okay, that's not too bad. So that it, it all it all depends on who wins their rounds because um, it all I mean, has to do with. So no matter no matter what, it looks like the Bruins would play the Capitals or the Islanders if they won their series. So if the Bruins won, they play the Islanders or the cap or the say it again, the Islanders or the whole Capitals or the Capitals. Okay. Unless, unless the Canadians and the Blue Jackets win, then the Bruins play the Canadians. Okay. So that's what we're going to look into. Again, the Bruins play again tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, God willing, at uh, 8 o'clock against Carolina Game 2. Again, another uh, great Game 1 for the Bruins with a final score of 4-3. to three. The 
Patrice Bergeron getting the overtime victory goal to give the Bruins a 1-0 series lead. Again, this is a best of game, best of seven, a best of seven. The Bruins need four wins. Need three more to get to the next round. Anything else on hockey, gentlemen? Uh, I mean, I just, I, it's it's going to be a good playoffs. 2020, 2020 made for a good a good year of NHL playoffs. A lot of good That's matchups. That's all we can hope for. A lot of good bring, matchups. I want to bring uh, Phil into the fold next because he's got the green teamers behind him rooting. I don't know if there's a cardboard cutout in the background or whatnot, but I think it's time we talk about the Celtics here a little bit because they're just about to start their playoff run, if I am correct. Am, am I, is that correct, Phil? You are correct. And Excellent. we can talk for another hour about Bruins. I'm not – I got stuff to do. The Celtics oh, look very good in the, in this bubble seeding games that they've been playing. They just came off another victory against uh, – that was Memphis yesterday, Against right? the Grizzlies, yeah. So that was another one. Was that the last game until the playoffs start? I think they have one more because I think they're I think they're either four or five and two. I forget what their record is because they're playing eight games. Everyone's playing eight games in the bubble. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that I actually think they've been they've been better. They've been more consistent the last uh, like four, four games three to four so. games. Yeah. Uh, Starting to find their rhythm. It looks like. What was that? Starting to find their rhythm. It looks like. Directing I think so. To get their playing together, getting their shots a little bit better. I think Jason Tatum is the one who's really like the last game. He was just like dropping just dollops into like just it was just splashing the net, and it was just kind of crazy because he's one yeah. of the guys who, you know, when he had like a twenty-nine or thirty-point game, he yeah. really wasn't. It seemed like he was getting like bailout calls going to the basket. Which, to be honest, it isn't bad because he. It's a good sign that he'll be getting calls going to the basket, and he should be going to the basket. But last game, he had a lot of great. Fallaways, a lot of great just like elbow jumpers that just kind of hit the bottom of the net, nothing else. And it seems like he was getting a bit of his stroke back. And even, I mean, no, I, I shouldn't say no surprise, but uh, this guy had been accelerating the rest of the year. And I'm not talking about my background. I'm talking about Gordon Hayward. Uh, he's yeah, been playing very well. Gordon Hayward is playing very well right now. And I think we are safe to say that he is fully healthy now. Roughly. I, I mean, like, he's healthy enough. I, I think yep. uh, the only thing ho- would be holding him, holding him back would be kind of any mental jitters. But it seems like he's high-flying, he's going up for alley-oops, so it seems like he's kind of put that uh, put that to uh, rest. And the only, the like... Person, yeah, the other person I was going to say that seems like they're doing some sort of a minutes restriction, maybe that's come off a little bit more, would be Kemba. Yeah, he's been, I think it's like 30 or 32 minutes. And uh, as far as I know, I don't know about the Grizzlies game, but I know the game before against, uh, I believe it was Toronto, um, or maybe not Toronto, uh, it was Orlando, I think. Yeah. Uh, he had the same restrictions. I think he'll have the same restrictions until the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, he, in the last game, the Memphis game, he was, you know, he was shooting out, uh, shooting a bit uh, better, and he's been getting there. And it's a, he's kind of a forgotten guy, too. I mean, he's a forgotten all-star on this team. I mean, your starting lineup is pretty crazy. You have Jalen Brown, who also has been really great. And, you know, my background, uh, he's been pretty great from uh, the three-pointer and just driving and defensively he's been pretty good. So you have Jalen Brown, uh, you have Jason Tatum, you have uh, Campbell Walker, you have Gordon Hayward, and you have uh, Tice. And uh, Tice has been. I was watching a little bit of the pre and post on Com- uh, uh, Comcast last week, Comcast Sports Night or Boston Sports. Yeah, whatever, yeah, the whatever they're and whoever's left, you know. Well, whoever's left because they laid everybody off and fired them all. Yeah. Uh, Scott was talking about how Daniel Tice should be an X factor here. I think that Tice has definitely become somebody of his own, meaning that he's somebody that definitely can add a little bit of pizzazz to that lineup and get the job done. I don't think there's any more doubt with, oh, here comes Daniel Tice, you know, we don't know what the heck he's going to do. I think you can get consistent production out of him now. Yeah, I think Tice is a really great player, um, great defensively, but he might be, he can get overpowered by a guy like, you know, on Oklahoma City, like Adams. Yeah. Or uh, sometimes, I, I mean, I don't know who else in the East will face besides Embiid. 
and maybe even um, in Milwaukee, and I can never um, get um, his name correctly because it's all Greek to me, as they say. Yeah, uh, the beat, the Greek, uh, the Greek god, the Greek, uh, the Greek freak, freak, the Greek, Greek uh, freak, which I think is kind of detrimental because that wow, that's that's really. I don't know if well, I guess freak is nice in this way, in this manner, but. Uh, no, but he uh, he actually does fares well against uh, the Greek freak, but you know actually does really well against him. Uh, your favorite, one of your favorite players, Nick. Actually, no, he, I mean, I and I I said it facetiously, but I think this season he's you've warmed up to him. Um, uh, Marcus Smart plays him very I well. Marcus Smart, I don't have any more doubts of Marcus Smart. He is definitely the glue of, of this team. If you take that off, remember how there was Kendrick Perkins back in the day, yeah, and that trade. Uh, I think it was OKC. And it was OKC on. for Jeff Green and Jeff a couple Green. others. Yeah. yeah, some other schmucks that came along. Yeah. If you took away, if you took away Marcus Smart for this team right now, we're done. We're done. I, I think, think that that glue is so important. He adds the spark. He adds the energy. One of the best defenders in the game. He's one of the best defenders, and he's really good in that second unit. Uh, I think you could get by without him, but uh, no, yeah, he's he's one of the heart. And soul pieces of this team. Piece. I think he's there. I think Jalen Brown is. You could put him there, and I think Jalen Brown is even more talented. But I also think Jalen Brown is one of those uh, like kind of forces. Jason Tatum is kind of like quiet force. I mean, he'll play. Yeah, he'll leave it out on the floor. I mean, even Kemba. Kemba actually said something pretty great uh, in the last month regarding this bubble, which uh, I know we'll get into the other sports, but I'm, I think it, it shows a lot about like the two sports we start out with and the fact that they share the common uh, denomination of having being in a bubble and it seems right. to be working. Uh, but Kemba Walker, Kemba Walker said of the team, he's like, Hey, this is like, this is Jason and Jalen's team. Like I'm happy to be here and just do what I can do. And you know, that's pretty amazing for him to take that uh, frame of mind and step back and know that if he, you know, if the shots there, he'll take it. And I don't think he means it in the sense like he'll always pass it up, but, you know, he knows, you know, uh, where the talent lies. And not to say Kemba isn't a talented player. He's really great. But um, Jason Tatum might be might be that guy. I like what I see. I just think that what you see right now with them being as healthy as they can, I think we're going to have a much more successful playoff ride here. And, again, it seems like it's been ages, but we're still on this first year without Kyrie here. So – I'm really, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Really Wait till that's come up. See, I'm really excited to see what this team can do when the game you know, really matters. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, we'll see what happens when they have to really go at it because uh, that is one criticism. I don't know if anyone's thrown that at them. But I've seen in these games, sometimes they don't go for loose balls. Uh, yeah. Minus Mark is smart, of course, but uh, sometimes it isn't there. But we'll see what, what happens. We'll see how Stevens gets them ready to play and. Uh, they're looking at the three seed, so they, I believe it's either Indiana or. Doesn't three play six? I it, three plays six, and I think uh, there are a couple teams, um, a handful of teams vying for the six. Either Miami, um, Indiana, and some others. But I, and I thought you know the seeds had a real shot at it too. But it, honestly, it doesn't really matter right now. It oh, really no, doesn't. No. I don't think it does. So I'm looking forward to when uh, those games start to matter. I believe it's going to be starting next week. So, so I think you're right, yeah. I think the weekend's too soon. I think we might see this uh, Monday or Tuesday starting next week, and we'll figure out when the Celtics really begin their postseason ride and hopefully raise that next banner to number 18. Wouldn't that be nice? It's a real possibility. Yep, it's a real possibility. I really like this team. They're very likable, and that's something that they needed. You know, after past couple seasons with some tur- – uh, tur- what's the word? Turbulence? No, not turbulence. Yeah, it, um, you could Tomotious turbulent. Kind of players. Yeah. yeah. Tomotious kind of players like Kyrie and, and uh, Scary Terry. Can't forget him either. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, in my life. if Kyrie actually played well enough, like if he could back up all the talk and wasn't really, you know, too crazy, then you'd be like, oh, you know, he, you know, we made it to the promised land with him. But no, he kind of, he kind of faltered. He did, oh, he did, he actually played pretty well in the playoffs, but he, they didn't play well enough to do what they needed to do. So, yeah. Um, the rest of the NBA, Phil, is, do you have a particular favorite right now and who you think is going to be in the NBA Finals and maybe have a champion winner? I don't, I don't know. 
look out for the Phoenix Suns. If they make it in the eighth seed, uh, it's going to be crazy because they've been battling against everyone. I mean, I, I still think the – Suns out, right? What happened? Suns out, guns out. Yeah, Phoenix a little Suns. bit. Devin, Devin Booker and uh, there's another um, – a young guy on the team that's – I mean, Devin Booker especially has been explosive, but there are a couple of players on that team, and it just seems like they have no fear. So uh, the Clippers obviously are – I mean, they're one – and the Lakers too. Let's not discount the Lakers. Even there are a couple of players on their team, former Celtic Avery Bradley isn't there. I know I Tom's know, giving the I, thumbs I, down, I, I, but – No thanks on the Lakers for me either. No thanks. No, I'll I mean, I don't, I don't want them to win, but I mean, <laughs> there's a there's a good chance that you'll be seeing them in the finals from the West. And you know what, I – Milwaukee is I don't for whatever reason there's something about Milwaukee that I can't yeah no yeah I mean it, they got a lot of uh, they have a lot of that choke in them I don't know man I knew I kept that down close um, for those of you who didn't see Nick just vomited into a trash can <laughs> on Was live that? TV yeah. <laughs> we need a prop of that down the studio um, yeah. but anyways I, I hope I hope for nothing but the best from Le- LeBron and the Lakers and all those frauds over there. So, uh, coronavirus too. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. Uh, but Dwight well, Howard, Dwight Howard is a good story. I will say that. On, uh, don't get me started with Dwight. <laughs> don't get me started with Dwight. Oh, get him on a wrist. Insufferable. Insufferable. Anyone else with the NBA? Speaking of insufferable. No. <laughs> No, I just think it's it's going to – I've loved what I've seen. I didn't know if I care as much about it. And obviously all of our, you know, everything we've ever held dear has kind of been thrusted into a kind of weird uh, kind of place. But you know oh, what? I'm it's, loving the NHL right now. Yeah, well, I, I mean, like on that same flip side of the coin, I'm it's loving the, the NBA world. games. And I give credit to both the NBA and the NHL for figuring it out. They've had no cases of any of the COVID-19. No, knock on wood, yeah. And Thank you, Tom. You have, NFL and you have the MLB, and it's a good time to transition to uh, Major League Baseball, which, in my opinion, is an absolute travesty and a joke. It's right a disgrace. Now. A garbage fire. It's a disgrace. It is my trash barrel 2.0, is what it is. Yeah. I'm surprised they're still playing the right 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 now. It's disgraceful on what they did to this product. And you know what? Shame on uh, Rob Man from the Commissioner. He is an absolute boob. It's disgraceful. I can't believe they're even still playing games right now. It's ridiculous. I mean, the Car- the Cardinals are the Cardinals, the Cardinals have to postpone what two weeks of games. Oh right? my god! Really? Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. the Marlins because they did. have like fifteen the cases of they have fifteen the cases of COVID. It's crazy. What are yeah, what are all these players doing? What's going on? They're not listening. They have like the the party. They had two players, uh, Clevenger and. Somebody else, they, they went out and they went partying and all kinds of stuff. Now, right. I heard the reason for the outbreak for the Marlins was they were in Georgia and they were doing some sort of travel with the team and they went to a strip club and that's where they picked it up from. Oh, that's why? Uh, oh, that's Georgia. Well, I mean, like the dollar piece of crap is what it is. The the MLB the MLB should have done what you know obviously should have done what the NHL and the NBA did and they should have just That's picked really like awesome. they should have picked like four it's four or six like they in somewhere else yeah. or no they should have, they should have, they should have, they should, have, they, should have had, they should have had like four or six sites that way they had yeah. you know they wouldn't have to worry about spatial issues and they would they would be able to play more games than just were having to worry about having like four games that go nine innings. I mean, Phil, I don't know if you heard about the embarrassment going on with the Toronto Blue Jays, but they're playing games at their minor league stadium finally in Buffalo, New York. I mean, come on. Well, you know what? Honestly, like, back to what uh, uh, Tom was saying, I I don't understand why they didn't, uh, from the get-go, be like, oh, we're going to be playing games at, like, uh, our – what was it? Our geez, uh, not spring break, but spring training facilities. Spring training facilities. Yeah. So what happened there is Florida and California and Arizona, they had so much of an outbreak that they yeah. couldn't put them and the governors wouldn't sign off on it. Well, That's what, what like happened. new, I don't understand, like, there's got to be someplace in New Mexico or, I mean, I know it's, it's hot, but there's got to be something in the southwestern, uh, like, uh, 
area of the United States that could have done it, or do it in Canada. I don't know. I mean, whether they'd let or Americans anywhere. in or not, they could have done it. They could have done it anywhere. If I was a player for Major League Baseball, I, I would be very much questioning whether I would actually want to play. Well, look so, at look at Mike Trout. Mike as, Trout almost didn't play. Much as I'm not a David Price fan. You know what? David Price is absolutely right. If I had a family and I had a little kid and everything, and mm. I was going out and getting, you know, so, somehow getting exposed to everything. I wouldn't play. Screw that. No, well, I wouldn't. Look at, look at Mike Trout. Mike Trout almost didn't play either. Yep. It took him a while to make his decision. And you see that. And then, uh, uh, away. They're not playing. Marcus Stroman's not playing. Uh, well, even the Red Sox have a couple players. They had, um, who was the guy that they signed from the Astros that was supposed to help out someone in the bullpen, but he's not playing. Brian Johnson elected to not join the team anymore. He wanted to stay away. It, it, it's definitely understandable if you're a baseball player not to be playing right now. With the, it's just stupid out there. But I blame this on the players too, Tom, and I blame I, as well, Phil, and that is because these players were so, oh, yeah, when and where, we'll play no matter where it is. But their, but their just agenda on what they wanted, they wouldn't budge. That this is all because of them. As much as the owners suck during this whole thing too, this is a hundred percent on the players. The players wouldn't budge. They didn't want to, you know, have a bubble. They wanted to play at their home park and they wanted to expose themselves to this. So you know what? You get what you deserve. Yeah. Uh, what that's, that's what crazy. are your what are your thoughts on Bull Cespedes situation? I never got to ask you, but what are your thoughts about that, Nick? About what he did, not... I just think he doesn't want to play. I think he knew how horrible of a season he was going to have. He said, I'm done with this. This team stinks. I stink. Why am I going to bother putting myself out there for 60 games and nothing? I think that's what it's done. Tell you the truth, Tom. I think he's so beat up and done. I think that a retirement's coming soon for him. Especially with the new CBA having to be drawn up now at the end of this season. Or whatever this is going to be called. This now, we've talked about Major League Baseball at a whole. Are there anything else you want to talk about before I start my rant on the Red Sox? Oh, no. I'm, I'm waiting for this, I guess. Let me grab the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all signed on just to hear a rant. That we yeah, pretty heard much. <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter... You know my take on what I feel this team is right now, and it is a big pile of burning doo-doo, the whole entire roster. And I blame this on ownership because the ownership is the one that was too damn cheap to go out and get a freaking arm that could go an inning or two. That's quality. You are relying upon barrel of the bottom, absolute manure. Manure, straight up. Fresh garbage. Ryan Blazier starting a baseball game. Are you freaking kidding me? Ryan Blazier. <laughs> it is an absolute disgrace and a middle finger to every single one of you Red Sox fans out there. How can you live with that? If you're a fan of this team, to see that complete, utter crap out there for a product. Disgusting. Absolute disgusting. I can't yeah. even name a starting pitcher right now. That's how either. that's how bad it is. Don't I don't worry. even Jeffrey, know any of them. Jeffrey Springs is pitching here tonight. Don't worry, folks. Jeffrey Springs. Gotta ease it. Who's that? I don't even think the computer knows if you throw these names in. Type them into Google. They don't even know. They go, who? Jeffrey Springs. Oh, he's the guy that works at the local 7-Eleven down the street. <laughs> oh, yeah. I <laughs> For the background images, I just put in, like, Boston Red Sox pitchers, and it's like, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Even Rodriguez is out because he got the virus, so he's got a heart condition. He's out. He got no sale. He's got Tommy John. David Price is sitting out. He's with the Dodgers now. Rick Porcello is a mess. Um, you, you're left with Ryan Weber, Ricky Porcello. I mean, not Rick Porcello. Uh, uh, Nathan Evaldi, excuse me. Who's, who's the yeah, best pitcher right now? Yeah, who's one more arm surgery away from being done for his career. Um, you got uh, Martin Perez, career like six-something 
ERA in Major League Baseball. Just disgusting. But don't worry, Ryan Brazier, he's going to get the ball tonight, and he's going to get the job done. We have full faith in him. Thank you. Matt Barnes is going to be a starter pretty soon. Oh, don't even. He is the worst <laughs> eighth-inning setup man in Major League Baseball. But, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny that this team builds up these players and all to, oh, don't you worry, fans. we got a good product out there. We've got everybody here ready to go. We got Jackie Bradley's gloves. We've got JD Martinez, big bat. Well, where the heck have they been? Andrew Benintendi, here he comes. Best pro- prospect we've ever had. Just utter crap because they weren't prepared. All these players basically shut down, and when they came back and said 60 games, they were not ready to go. You got Devin sitting on his couch at home playing Fortnite, stuffing his face with donuts. Looks like Pablo Sandoval's brother out there on the field. <laughs> Baby Orca out there. My goodness. Something's running in the water over there at Fenway for third baseman. Um, and then you have your manager, Mr. Lane Duck. Lane is Ron Renicky here. Can't even manage a key ball team, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I haven't really heard anything about him. Like, what is his – is he just, like – is he also, like, the team, like, caterer? His bench, uh, All right. his bench coach from everything. This guy has – how is this guy a major league manager for the Milwaukee Brewers? How in the living world did this man survive five years in Milwaukee and have a winning record? You know, I, if, if any of you follow me on Twitter, you'll see my big thing I say. I say lifeless Renicky, lifeless. He's like Casper the Ghost. He offers you absolute diddly squat, diddly. I would rather Bobby freaking Valentine as the manager right now of the Red Sox versus this. Wow, that's, that's digging a little deep. low. Bobby that's a little deep low. Deep right there. Feed me a damn rap with Bobby Valentine again over Ron Renicky. And would so you... many people out there, oh, don't blame him. The team set him up for all this. He's the boss. He's the one giving these players off. Oh, Mitch Mullen, you hit two home runs on Sunday. Don't we're gonna sit you down Monday night because you need a day off. Are you kidding me? The hardest hitter you sit, you put him on your bench. It's disgusting. Andrew Benintendi's got three hits. He's three for sixty this season. Oh, we're gonna have him take a day off next day. Leading off for the Red Sox, Andrew freaking Benintendi. I mean, come on. <laughs> You know, I act like they haven't won a championship in years, but you know what? It, we yeah, what, is it, what do you want? I, I don't know what I want. I want a team that actually cares, that has a sack. That's what I want to see. So I, I think. Be careful what you wish for, I guess. <laughs> I don't want that. I want a team. It's coming. No, it's not. I want a team that cares. <laughs> I want a team that has passion. I want a team that picks each other up and fights through these <coughs> and, yeah. and through everything. Um, another problem that I have with this team, we have enough time in this show. Um, J.D. Martinez has, has continued to bitch and complain about not having his video room. And the video room, now that's not where you're going to play video games. That's where he gets to break down his swing and analyze everything that's going on with stuff. Well, Major League Baseball has taken that away from all teams, and he is blaming that as his reason why he is not swinging a baseball bat. What is wrong with these players? Like, what is wrong? You're going to blame your results on not having a video room? It's because it's because it's because Renicky won't tell him what is, what's wrong with this swing. What land are we in? What honestly? Tell me what land. Well, I mean, I can understand parts of that. I mean, that's part of his regiment for the past yeah, how many years? Gonna, well, when he was released from the Astros, that was 2013, and then he reinvented himself by breaking down his swing and all, and he gets that done in between innings, in between at bats by his video room. These players are still allowed to have their iPad on the bench. They're still allowed to go home at night and maybe figure out, maybe he has a video room of himself at home. Who knows? You know, and just put, put He the, just looks at himself all day. Put that thing in your computer, 
fire it up and look at maybe what you're doing wrong, you know, with your swing. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't disagree with that, that he has, you know, he could go do it himself if he needed to. But I can't believe we're at the point where we're going to blame these things, you know, these results on a video room not happening or all these things that might be taken away or all these challenges that are faced. Oh, it all starts at the top. We're all dealing with these challenges individually. What was that, Tom? It all starts at the top. Oh, it all starts at the top. You were going to, okay. Yeah. Everything starts at the top, and and you know it. it I mean, it basically starts at Renicky, and if and Renicky is not really melding, uh, welding the team together very well. I mean, Even like John you said, Fowler, all the all the all the things that we have I have said about John Fowler over the years. I would even welcome John Fowler back in open arms. At least he had a fire. This guy, he can stand up against the wall in the dugout, and nobody would even under know what he's doing. He could go take a sleep. He could go t- go to the sleep room at Fenway. I think matter? I think I think the team can manage themselves better without him than with him. Oh, I completely agree with you. Completely and completely agree with you. I mean, you. it's like you said. Why would you sit? Why would you sit the guy down the next day after hitting two home runs in one game? That just makes no sense. Let's sit down our hardest bat after taking a series. They're two games out of three against Toronto. I actually started saying, all right, this isn't so bad. They're three games back. And then you see this disgusting product that they bring out Monday and Tuesday night here. The game started at 7.30 Monday night. Did not get over until 12 o'clock in the morning. 12 o'clock to watch that disgraceful product. I'm all done. I'm all done. I cannot sit myself through that anymore. I thought they tried to – what did they do to try to speed it up? I thought they did something to combat that. So there's a new rule where if you're a relief pitcher, and we can talk about this rule too, where you have to pitch to at least three batters. Three batters oh, batters. yeah, that's right. You can't switch so them out left, for like – which I think is kind of BS, to be honest. Is, I, I hate the rule. So there's lefty specialists like back in the day we used to have yeah. like Javier Lopez or we used to have an Alan Embry. You know, or, yeah, have, or even Mike Timlin or whatever, yeah. You know, it's it's part of the strategy. Time. Yeah. The other thing that they did is in extra innings, they are installing a runner automatically on second base now. Oh, weird. And then the other rule that's unanimous across the board is in the National League, the DH is a part of the game the entire time. So pitchers I like that one. Oh, wow. That's great. That's crazy. I, that. I, I love that. that one. You can tell I'm out of the loop. <laughs> I love, I love yeah. that one. I, I just hope. No, thank I you. Just, I just, no, thank you. I just hope they don't continue using that rule next season. I think they just, I think they just applied it for this this season help. because because of uh, how they're doing intra intra league. You better hope Manfred's out of here because if, with 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 him as commissioner. That's Wait, how this game. Is. I don't know this. And one. then you can just and then you can just say goodbye to JD. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if that rule that. stays in place, you can say goodbye to JD. I think this whole yeah, season is just a weird. It, it'll be a forgotten era. If the National League is now DH Central, well, I mean JD Martinez is really struggling right now, so he might not get that big money deal because he's got two more option years left. He might be stupid to opt out. So, in a way, you kind of don't want him to step the world on fire because that probably means he stays. I like J.D. Martinez. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean to be critical of him with the whole video room and stuff. I think he'll figure it out. It's just the whole matter of the fact that that story about that video room has to come out. I think he'll figure out his swing. But with Mookie already gone here, folks, and your your big bat, your future is kind of unknown, I think you have to invest in J.D. Martinez here. Yes, he's 33, but look how long J.D. Ortiz went. You know, he went into his 40s. 41 was his last year. I would, I would seriously think about ripping up JD's contract right now, giving him some sort of an extension, you know, three or four years, and cementing him into the cornerstone of your Red Sox, your, your future, which includes Bogart, that includes uh, hopefully JD Martinez, and then well, who knows from there. Yeah, and, and then double header games this year too are. Seven innings instead of nine. That's the other, that's the other thing too. Yeah, seven innings are double headers. And this is why I don't watch baseball. 
a lot of changes, and a lot of changes that I don't really care for. And do you think? Changes, do you think the they'll changes, be there the after changes, this year? The change—I I don't know. It's going to have to be a vote on the players' association. But all these changes were made to speed up the game. They were made yeah. the game short. Games continue to get longer and longer and longer here. So well, that and they're, do, it, it's stupid. Well, they're taking away the strategy of the game. Is what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. and they're ruining the game. I mean, the baseball's been around for hundreds of years. If you don't like the game by now, then don't watch it. And people yeah. aren't. <laughs> people in droves, people aren't let's, watching. Let the 65 plus crew watch the game. I'll stick to hockey. You know, Phil, you can stick to basketball. Tom will stick to hockey. And we'll all just watch football. If baseball wants to throw out this disgusting product, you got you, uh, you lost me. And I, I, I think I, baseball is going to take. I I think baseball is going to take a dip after this season. I think they have. It's going to take a, a, a huge dip. It's going to take a huge dip. And I think they have to. They haven't done this in forever. They have to kind of talk, and you know, they have to parlay to their Latin American audience. Open up a team in uh, Mexico or Central America, like Puerto Rico. Yeah, Puerto. Like, I mean, make because that's where your bread and butter is coming from, and that's where the uh, a youthful movement is happening. Like, if middle, if beyond uh, yeah, yeah. St. Louis. If St. Louis is the only uh, city that gives uh, a crap about baseball anymore, truly, then you're in trouble. I mean, then you either radically change things and you either try to talk to the, the players union and try to get them to restructure some stuff or you, you know, you're going to die a slow kind of painful, painful. death. It's going to be a huge, it's going to be a huge dip this season. And they have the yeah. CBA coming up after the season. It's just, it's going to be a mess. Well, I know we have about five minutes left to go here on our show. We're going to keep this at an hour here, but we didn't talk about anything with football, and I do want to wrap up with that right Let's now. Let's go for it. Let me get my background going. Phil, I want to – actually, we'll go with Tom while Phil gets his background up. There's my question. Are you a fan of Cam Newton? Do you I, like this I mean, move? Do you like this move the Patriots made? I, I – I, I have mixed feelings about it. I have mixed feelings. I I've, I was always I was always a I was a fan of him. You know, his first couple of years in the league, and then he started doing all that showy stuff and showing off, and you know, bragging with all his touchdown celebrations. So I kind of got sick of him. Um, but do I think he's good for the Patriots? Absolutely. I think him and Belichick will go well together. Bill? Well, I don't know if you can tell um, part of the background, but uh, no, I, you know what? All that aside, all that like showmanship aside, yeah, I think he's here to play. And I think like, you know, you substitute one superstar for another. I mean, where can you, it's not, I don't want to say it's the best case scenario, but considering what happened with, you know, letting Brady go or, you know, that's another topic. Is it, was it letting Brady go or did he, or was he gone? But you have Cam Newton here, uh, and whoever is going to stay to play this year, uh, he'll have that the team will rally around him, and he'll be pretty good. And I also think he'll do better than Brady in a lot of ways of working with the younger guys, and in the sense that Brady didn't want to really deal with that last year, and it showed. It showed because he didn't really get as much production, it seems. Well, New- Newton's mobile, did. too. He's a mobile yeah. quarterback, so that's going to be huge for the offense. And do you think and- they're going to – uh, you know, utilize it. Yeah, Absolutely. do you think they're gonna play? I think I think it's something. I think it's something that Belichick, you know, hasn't had before, and I think he, I, I think he'll be looking forward to, you know, implementing that into the playbook a little bit. Um, and I, I think, and I do think he's here to play. I, I think he's one of the few people, one of the few players that's come here and is actually ready to go and ready to play, and he wants to show he's he's ready to prove himself all over again. Me, I've really never been a big fan of Cam Newton. I haven't really particularly cared for him pretty much ever since that Super Bowl after he lost and he kind of had a hissy fit on the stage. And he's always been a diva type. He's got that Kyrie kind of persona oh, yeah. away that, that I'm better than the world and I haven't really won anything yet. And 
I want him to do well. Don't get me wrong. I want him to do well. But I really, truly believe that the future here for the Patriots is Jared Stidham. That's my bold move. So my bold, my boldest move is that Cam Newton ends up getting released before week one and Jared Stidham is your starting quarterback. Oh, wow. 100% other way with that for me. But um, That's I think, my yeah, I think so Stidham. Don't get me wrong. I no, want sure. him to yeah, yeah. and I said he comes back to his MVP form. What was that 2015 when he won the MVP? I think so. And he's under a one-year contract, so it's kind yeah, of. He has something to prove. Yeah. Now, I don't blame the Patriots who want to take a risk here with this. I think it's cheap money for somebody that has something to show that may do very well here in this system. I do know that the Patriots playbook has already been simplified to make it easier for Newton. So that's a really good thing if you're in the Newton camp and want him to be that quarterback now and into the future. But we also need to be realistic here, folks. And this isn't just for Tom and this isn't just for Phil here. This is a guy that's been very beat up the last few years. To think that he's going to come back and be 2015 Cam Newton all over again is wishful thinking in my eyes. What he's going to look like right now, a little bit more healthy, I don't know. I don't know until I actually see some games. So my bold, my bold statement is that Jared Stidham is your starting quarterback for week one, and Newton well, is I, out of here. I, I'm in agreement with you. I, I do think that Stidham's going to be the future of the Patriots, but I, I, I just don't see – if they were going to end up planning on releasing him before week one, I don't think they would have even signed him. I mean, I know that's the classic Belichick move, but like if they were going, if they were planning on staying with Stidham, they would have, they wouldn't have signed yeah. Newton. Whatsoever. I think it's too much money to release him, to be honest, because it's not a lot of money, but it's still like a couple million, isn't it? Or yeah, a couple. I think it's like two million guaranteed. Yeah. So I mean, even then, I think that's too much money for that. But I, I mean, I do agree. They have a hole. I will tell you right now that whether it's Newton or Stidham, next year's team is going to be a whole lot better, and they're actually going to win more games than last year's team under Tom, under an unmotivated Tom Brady. I I think there's a I think there's a chance, but you, don't forget that they're also part of the defense. One of your best defensive players of not maybe not this last dynasty yeah, of the team. Yeah. High Tower is out, and also uh, I forget who there's a couple players that. Is, yeah, um, there's a lot of players out. But. Yeah, after Charlie, yeah. So the, the linebacker, the linebacker position is pretty, pretty dicey right now. And like, even the offensive line too. I also said that if if something comes out and they're in a some sort of a bubble setting and yeah, at players are healthy, he'll come and play. He's which doing best interest for his family right now. Which yeah, of course, they should and do. he's yeah, and everyone should them, including teachers, should. I mean, that should be the same thing, yep. but. Uh, I yeah I don't understand why the NFL isn't like because this is like a cash cut like they could put literally and their resources are pretty deep like I don't know why yeah, they're not and, and it would be so they they're the easiest league to put in a bubble yeah then you it's could one game a week on Saturday you could have games Saturdays and Sundays and it would be great yeah. people would love that I, it'd yeah. be amazing and you how many dome teams do you have right well you got the Orleans you've got the you know, Indianapolis you have who else has a dome? Uh, the Vikings. Something Atlanta. Like that. Atlanta has the dome. Uh, and I Houston, think New uh, Orleans. Houston have one. Houston does have a dome. Yep. And Houston the Cowboys. Um, yep. The Cowboys have a dome. So, so like you could all of Texas. You can make it work. You can yeah. Right. Make it. Yeah. No, I mean, but that's like, but, isn't isn't that the thing though? It's just kind of like, well, how did the NBA do it? It's like, well, you know, and maybe a basketball court is different in a lot of ways, and it is. But man, like. Hell, go once again. Not to say I'm saying everyone migrate to Canada, but take over the arena football leagues. I don't know. <laughs> just like, like, well, like it, it's an American it, way to it go. It would just be, it would just be, it would just be stupid for them not to do a bubble because then you could still do the Monday night game, you could still do the Thursday night games, and then you just split half and half Saturdays and Sundays, and you, there you go. Yeah, you, you got your whole entire, right you know, your whole entire right. league there. You, you could definitely utilize Saturdays now with no college football. So, yeah, and okay. you know well, what? I, yeah, no, oh, go ahead, Tom. Sorry. I, I, I just, I just think that I think they're just waiting on more of a solidified answer to what's going on with the virus. Yeah, I don't I think, think they're going to get it. I, I think it's been. Changed. 
Yeah, yeah I, it's changing so much that they just need to make a decision and, you know, just go. With it. Yeah, I mean, I my frame of mind is it same like this when with like the, the nation, like, you know, stick with something that's more generic right now that, you know, like a bubble and then just kind of work with that. And the things that change, you, you know, you can kind of like change you know, have content. It. Yeah, exactly. Have contingencies. I don't like what's the problem with uh, being like, oh, we were wrong. We're going this way now like who's going to give them you know you're not going to you're not going to lose advertising like you everything's going to be locked in i mean i don't know whatever man <laughs> whatever nfl yeah and then give and then give like fox half the games give nbc half the games you know yeah. fox on saturdays nbc on sundays or whatever you want to do you know it, it's well fun. that's got to be i wasn't even thinking about that that I'm, i imagine that's pretty messy right now but yeah i mean i'm sure they can work something out it would have to be all these, uh, the, I mean, the money that these, they get from these networks is just yeah. outrageous. So, yes, that's a big priority for making sure that it's fair and balanced and, you know, everybody wins at the end of the day. And I didn't even think, you brought up a great point, Nick. I didn't even think about it. Like, yeah, college games, at least for now, are not going to happen. Correct. So, I mean, like, yeah, you have plenty of other, even bigger, well, not you're going to fill stadiums, but bigger uh, arenas for people just to go into. And if you want to keep things in a bubble, that team is at that school or whatever, you know, or facility. You could use that facility. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. That seems, yeah, more viable. Any other final statements we want to make before we wrap up our first virtual Face the Fact, which was a lot of fun, by the way. Yeah. we got to definitely do this again if we don't do it at least once a week or twice a week. I think the plan will do this at least bi-weekly right now. I think it works out well for everybody. Um, it gets us a chance definitely to interject with everything going on in sports. And we got a lot that's thrown at us right now with sports. You know, usually this is just the Red Sox time, but this is now Bruins, Celtics, Red Sox are all um, Red Sox, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> all kind of, uh, kind of in this right now. So, no, it's crazy. It's great. It's great. We have I love it. Though. Something to look forward to with sports and all. And uh, we hope that we can – talk about it and break down all these games and everything more with you on more of these shows upcoming. So again, final score today was four to three Bruins in game one against the Carolina Hurricanes. They'll play again tomorrow, which will be game two. And let's hope the Bruins definitely get going and have a successful Stanley Cup ride through the playoffs. But what's that come? Uh, anything else, Phil, Tom? Uh, I got nothing. Uh, yeah, just everyone be safe, do what you can and yeah, do something kind. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Nick and Tom for agreeing to do this. Thank this was man. fun. This great, yeah. This, 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 this is great. All right. This is Nick face signing off here for another episode of face the facts, our virtual edition. Uh, we will see you next time here for another show. Have a good day.